I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Haller, Bibliomancers, and my new Bibliomancer, Tiffany Jordan. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support toward my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, today's video will be SFM Spotlight episode uh, 44. We're only about three episodes away before uh, the last episode of SFF Spotlight uh, this year, and I'm excited to make all of them. But for now, uh, as usual, uh, there are more than 20 topics to spotlight today. And if you are new here, this is where I will talk about new book news, new cover reveals, new special edition, new Kickstarter projects, and new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And because in today's episode, I have only two cover reveals to spotlight today, well, I might as well start from that. And at the same time, there are also new book announcements. The first one is The Mercy of Gods by James S.A. Corey. This is the newest book by the duo behind the Expanse series. I have read and really enjoyed uh, the Expanse, although I do think that the TV show is better. It is such a shame that the TV show is never completed because book number seven, eight, and nine is never adapted into the big screen. The Mercy of Gods is the newest book in a new series that I think is unrelated to the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. I am definitely looking forward to reading this one. Just like the Expanse, uh, the cover art is done by Daniel Doshu, and it is uh, designed by Loren Panepinto. Easily one of my most anticipated books of next year. And the next book news or new cover reveals to spotlight will be for the newest installment in the Dark Blade series by Andy Pelequin. Uh, this title is Dark Blade a Defender. The cover art is done by Luciano Fleitas. And yeah, this is, for those of you who don't know, an assassin and also epic fantasy series. Massive one at that, because if I'm not mistaken, the newest two books in the series, I think each of them actually has uh, more than 400,000 words in total. Yeah, the newest one I think is about 430,000 words long, and Andy Pelequin is determined to make this series probably a 10 book or 12 books series. So yeah, it's going to be a massive epic fantasy series about an assassin. And I haven't started reading this series yet, but yeah, rest assured, this one is definitely in my TBR pile, and I'm still not sure when I'm going to tackle this one, but I definitely will someday. So that's it for the topic of new book news and also cover reveals. And before we talk about a TV show and anime stuff, let's talk about Goodreads Awards first. So Goodreads Awards 2023 uh, is up. The nominees are all out now. And well, of course, I have to choose. In the fantasy category, I have to choose The Will of the Many by James Islington. This is an easy pick. If you have watched my channel this year, then you will know that The Will of the Many is my favorite fantasy book of the year so far. And well, there is only one month left before I decide which one will reign as my favorite fantasy book of the year. But I do not think anyone will be able to top uh, The Will of the Many for me. But there is something interesting about uh, this year uh, Goodreads Awards because there's a new category now and a new category is romantasy, romance and fantasy. As some of you might know already, romantasy is a really big thing in the year 2023, and it is pr practically guaranteed that The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros will definitely win the category. Definitely. I mean, without any adaptation at all, this is already one of the most popular books of all time in the modern fantasy world anyway, because it's only I think it's only six months since The Fourth Wing was released. It already has more than 700,000 ratings. That's more than what Miss Bourne has. So that should give you an idea of just how popular The Fourth Wing is. So having romanticy in a different category than fantasy, even though romanticy is still a fantasy, but this gives more room for fantasy books and adult epic fantasy books like well, The Will of the Many, and also the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence, and many other books to have a chance of visibility because Believe it or not, being nominated in the Goodreads Awards actually do helps a lot in making people put the book in their TBR pile. As you can see from the stats here for the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. Personally, I have nothing to vote outside of fantasy and sci-fi category. And yeah, for fantasy, I have to choose the will of the many. Now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. It is time to talk about some TV show adaptation uh, updates before we move on to talk about Kickstarter and also special edition. And the first one is regarding Avatar The Last Airbender live action uh, trailer. Yeah, the new trailer or teaser is out now. And surprisingly, even though I had very low expectations for this, but the teaser actually turned out surprisingly uh, quite good. Now, my expectation for this one 
well, I will still keep it a bit low, but it does look promising and I hope the actual episodes will actually deliver a great storytelling that live up to the animation, not like the first Avatar that is directed by um, Naj Shalaman. That one, as some of you might know already, is a huge, huge travesty on the Avatar The Last Airbender. It is awful. And this new Avatar The Last Airbender will premiere in February 2024. And here's something I'm more excited about, honestly, because this is Arcane. Arcane Season 2 finally has a release date and it is slated to be released in November 2024. Season 1 of Arcane is one of the best animation that I have ever watched and I hope this one will live up to our high expectations. I mean, Season 1 has really shot up a lot of people's list of favorites, including mine, and it is, well, it it is not a surprise that many people are waiting for season 2, especially after that brutal cliffhanger in season 1. And as mentioned, Arcane season 2 is slated to be released in November 2024. And yeah, I think I definitely will rewatch season 1 again before season 2 premiere. And onward to the next topic, this is about The Witcher. So The Witcher has a new anime coming and the title is The Witcher Sirens of the Deep. I have an idea of which short story they will adapt here because I have read the two collection of short stories, but hey, I could be wrong. But there is something, uh, although I do not think the animation based on the teaser, the short teaser that I've seen uh, live up to the previous animation, but it is really good to find out that Doug, the voice actor behind Geralt in the video games, returned to his role as Geralt in this anime. And yeah, I am excited about that because I think I'm just so used to him narrating Geralt and it's great to see him back again. And next we will talk about Yu Yu Hakusho live adaptation. I honestly have no idea how many of you actually know Yu Yu Hakusho. So it is a very, a used to be very popular manga by the creator behind Hunter x Hunter. And I love the manga very much. And now it is getting a live adaptation. As usual, I tend to be very, very apprehensive about live show adaptation over the manga or anime but I will give this one the benefit of the doubt. But considering the fact that One Piece live show adaptation was originally doomed by many of, the, many of the viewers to fail, well, it succeed at winning a lot of people's hearts and hopefully Yu Yu Hakusho can do that uh, as well. Now for the remaining two topics in this section of SFF Spotlight, there are not good news. If you are a fan of the Shadow and Bone uh, TV show, which is adapted from the Grisha trilogy by uh, Lee Bardugo, well, I'm afraid there is bad news because the TV show has been cancelled. Lee Bardugo has written how sad and devastated she is over this news, but this is Netflix. This happened quite a lot. But to be honest, from my own perspective, I did not enjoy season 2 at all. I would be surprised if the show was cancelled from season 1 because season 1 was actually quite good. But season 2, in my opinion, it was quite a mess. I couldn't finish it. I think I watched uh, three episodes and yeah, I DNF the show. I just couldn't bring myself uh, to care about everything that is going on in the season two of Shadow and Bone. But yeah, as I said, if you are a fan of Shadow and Bone a TV show, then I'm afraid this is bad news because it is pretty much confirmed there will be no more continuation to this. And for the next news, this is for the anime Jujutsu Kaisen season two. I don't know if you uh, many of you are caught up to this or not, but as I'm a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen and I watch uh, the episode uh, weekly, it seems like season 2, the Shibuya arc, is facing a possible huge delay because the animators have spoken out loud about the harsh treatment from MAPPA toward their animators. There are so many details surrounding this issue and I believe the animators' grievance are well deserved. They deserve to be pissed over MAPPA's treatment uh, for them. I will leave the link to the details in the description down below, but to put it simply, they are facing insane and hellish uh, schedule and treatment. If you know the process of animation, then once you read the details, once you find out about the details about this, I think you will be shocked that they could still produce such high quality episodes. Like for example, the recently released Attack on Titan, which was an amazing conclusion to the anime. And then of course, uh, each episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. From my view as a consumer of Jujutsu Kaisen anime, I actually think they are doing such spectacular job. Most of the episodes are incredibly well done and they're doing this episode by episode a week. But still, there are tons of complaints, which in my opinion is kind of undeserved towards some drop in quality in some episodes. And yeah, pretty much everything after their combined lead to this situation and issue. I hope everything will be resolved quickly. And now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. It is time to talk about Kickstarter projects. Today, I have five Kickstarter campaigns to spotlight 
three of them have gone live, two of them are still in the waiting stage. But the Kickstarter page are available already. Let's start with the one that have gone live first. So first, let's talk about the ultimate edition of the Gunmetal Gods by Zamil Akhtar. This is the third time I'm featuring Gunmetal Gods by Zamil Akhtar on my SFF Spotlight video. Usually I don't do it uh, that much. But I have to because the Kickstarter campaign for this one has launched and it is looking pretty incredible. Let's just say that Zamil Akhtar has pulled out everything to make sure this is becoming one of the best looking special edition. We have cover art by Rashad Al Akroka and a naked hardcover by Hatem Arafa and then typography and overall design by Rachel Sinclair and then there are at least seven fully colored interior illustrations by Andrew Maleski, Hazim Amin, Joel Kaim Holtzman and Omer Burak Onal and then there is also a map by Riku Simila and chapter header by Joan Belda. That's a lot of artists mentioned and as you can see here from the image, this is truly shaping up to be one of the best Kickstarter campaign this year. And there are a lot of Kickstarter campaign for sub fantasy books this year, as some of you might know from watching my SFF Spotlight videos. So yeah, if you're interested in getting yourself a copy of this, then back it up. At the time of recording this video, Gunmetal Guts is almost $50,000 in funding and there are still plenty of stretch goals uh, to meet. And the next Kickstarter campaign to Spotlight is a sequel to The Threat of Shadows by Janice Andrews. So if you back the first one, The Threat of Shadows, I think some of you might have received your copy of Threat of Shadows. I still haven't received mine, but this is for The Pursuit of Shadows, the sequel to The Threat of Shadows and the second book in the Keeper Chronicles series. The first book uses a red color scheme and the second book uses blue color. I think overall in terms of design and production quality, I think this will be similar to the first book, The Threat of Shadows Kickstarter edition. And yeah, Omer Burak Onal will be back again to do the interior artworks for The Pursuit of Shadows. And here is one more Kickstarter campaign and I am talking about Mother of Learning Arc 3 and also Arc 4. If you have been following my channel, then you will know that Mother of Learning has become one of my favorite series. It is such a fun and entertaining series. And this will conclude the hardcover edition of Mother of Learning. Just like the first two books in Mother of Learning hardcover edition by Raidmark Creative, the cover art is done by Man Sik Young and then also designed by Sean King. And then there will be colored and papers by, I assume, Daniel Kamarudin and again Asur Misoa. Just like the first two books. And this one is already about $150,000 in funding and it has met all stretch goals. I still haven't received my copy of Mother of Learning Arc 2. I don't know where it is right now. I hope it's not lost. But I hope it will arrive soon and then I hope I will be able to secure a copy of Mother of Learning Arc 3 and Arc 4. And then I will have the hardcover of the entire series. And speaking of design by Sean King earlier, well for the next one is again by Ritmark Creative and this is for the free the Darkness by Calcate, the first book in the King's Dark Tiding series. It is a very popular sub-published fantasy series. I heard a lot of great things about uh, the series but I still haven't read it. But I do think the design and the cover art here are spot on. It looks amazing. The cover art is done by my friend Felix Ortiz and the design is as I said by Sean King. This duo is back to provide their skills for the cover art of Free the Darkness by Calcate. And yeah, this is published by Redmark in collaboration with Podium. I certainly look forward uh, to the release of this one. As I said, I still haven't read Free the Darkness yet. If you have read it, do tell me what you think about it. And also for the last Kickstarter campaign to spotlight is again by Redmark Creative. Because as some of you might have noticed from my SFF Spotlight videos, most of published fantasy Kickstarters that I spotlighted are usually handled either by Redmark or by AC Cobble or Merrick Books. These two are responsible for the majority of the Kickstarter campaign I spotlighted in my SFF Spotlight videos. And for the last one, this will be for the War Form Storm Weaver series by Bryce O'Connor and for the first book by Luke Shmilenko uh, as well. And this will be for the hardcover edition for Iron Prince and also Fire and Song, the first two books in the War Form Storm Weaver series. The Kickstarter campaign for this one hasn't launched yet, but if you're interested in getting yourself a copy of it uh, eventually, then make sure to click Notify Me in the Kickstarter page. So that's a wrap on the topic of Kickstarter campaign. Now let's move on to the next section. It is time to talk about special editions. And the first one that I I want to spotlight is the special edition for The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the Subterranean Press edition. So I do not think it will be easy and cheap to acquire this one. I believe the price will be $195. 
But although I do think the cover art by John Hoey looks absolutely incredible, but there will be no interior illustrations. And I think that is a huge disservice to Robin Huff's books, especially the Life Shape Traders trilogy, one of the best trilogy in the realm of the Elder Ling series. I'm sure there will be more details regarding how to purchase uh, the special edition of the Life Shape Traders trilogy, but for now, I think this is it. As far as I know, if you don't own a copy of Farseer trilogy, Subterranean Press Edition, which was released in the year 2016, I think there's a good chance it will be difficult to acquire a copy of the Life Ship Traders. And if that's the case, I hope the Broken Binding one day will release their own special edition for the Realm of the Elderlings. But before I talk about the Broken Binding special editions, because there are plenty of news coming from the Broken Binding like usual, I want to talk about Grim Oak Press edition first. If you are a fan of The House in the Cerulean Sea, by TJ Klune, it is now possible to pre-order the Grim Oak Press edition of The House in the Cerulean Sea with the cover art and interior artworks by David Curtis. Well, for me, I haven't read House in the Cerulean Sea yet and I'm not sure when I will actually read that. So for this one, I will have to skip getting a copy of the House in the Cerulean Sea Grim Oak Press edition. Plus for the next news, this is still Related to Grim Oak Press, I'm going to put an image here and you can see tons of special editions and amazing sounding titles in this image. And well, in Black Friday, in the upcoming Black Friday next week, all of this will be discounted. I don't know by how much, but if you are someone who wants to get a copy of the Dragonbone Chair Grim Oak Press Edition, or maybe The Daughter of the Empire or Red Queen's War by Mark Lawrence, then this is your chance. I too will be looking forward to seeing uh, what the discount will be. And I don't know, let's see whether I will end up getting a copy or not because I am now really low on cash because this is the end of the year. I am low on budget for buying books <laughs> because I have spent a lot of money on books uh, this year. But again, we'll see if the deal is too good to resist, then well, I have to get them. So yeah, Black Friday on the 24th of November, these books, the special editions by Grim Oak Press will be discounted. Make sure to check their website. Now let's talk about Broken Binding Edition. The first Broken Binding news that I want to spotlight is regarding their new subs for the month of January until the month of March. The details have all been revealed and this is for the Hang God Trilogy by Tilde Holt. Sorry if I mispronounce uh, the name, hopefully I'm right. But the cover art of this one, they are looking spectacular because this is illustrated by Randy Vargas. Just take a look at this. These are some of the finest cover arts that I have ever seen. And although I haven't read the books yet, but the cover art and also the end paper by Rene Eichner have certainly earned my interest. Plus, I'm always a fan of Norse mythology, so I definitely will read uh, this one once I have the Broken Binding Edition of the Hang God trilogy. And also, because for this trilogy, Katrina Paints will be doing a connecting foil art on all three books, as you can see from the image here. And also, of course, the digitally spray edges will be done by Katrina Paints as well. So yeah, as you can tell from the images here, The Broken Binding has really upgraded their quality for their subscription. And also, as I said, the next subscription after the Hang God trilogy will also be something, something that will blow people's mind. That's all I can say because I am only allowed to tease. And for the next Broken Binding news, this will be for the Broken Binding press edition of The Fall by Ryan Cahill. So the foil art has been revealed. Again, this is done by Katrina Paints, but that's not all. So the Broken Binding and Ryan Cahill have announced there will be a slipcase of of Blood and Fire and also The Fall. And yeah, as you can see from the artworks here, they are again done by Katrina Paints. Of Blood and Fire will have a gold lining. For The Fall, it will have a silver lining. And then we will see what comes next for Of Darkness and Light. But yeah, it is possible to purchase the slipcase edition with The Fall that is going to be, I think it will be available to actually pre-order The Fall at the end of this month. So make sure to check out their social media if you want to get the Broken Binding Press edition of The Fall, which is looking to be much superior compared to their edition for Of Blood and Fire. So that's it for the Broken Binding updates, and I still have two special editions to spotlight, and they are done by traditional publisher. The first one is by Orbit Books. This is for their edition of Ruination by Anthony Reynolds. So their own edition, uh, their trade edition, trade hardcover edition for Ruination already looked pretty good, relatively, when compared to a lot of uh, hardcovers in traditional publishing. And they have finally unveiled their own special edition for Ruination, and it will come with a slipcase 
beautiful suitcase and also the reversible dust jacket will be used as the cover art. Uh, the cover art is done by Valentina Remenar and there will be fully colored art inside the book as well. Well done to Orbit for this. I hope in the future, of course this is easier said than done, but I hope Orbit will release more beautiful special edition like this. And finally for the last special edition to spotlight, this will be for the Stormlight Archive Book 1 until book 4 UK edition. There will be no changes to the cover art. This is the same cover art as the hardcover that they have for the Stormlight Archive, but it will come with a new foil on the naked hardcover and also new spray edges. Well, personally speaking, I do not think this is really worth the purchase if you already have a copy of the Stormlight Archive in hardcovers, especially because they are not signed as well. But I know that many Sanderson fans, they will want to increase their collection of Sanderson's books and well, you have it. And speaking of Golangs, let's move on to the final section of SFF Spotlight. Time to spotlight some new noteworthy release. And the first one is for The Narrow Road Between Desires by Patrick Rothfuss. As some of you might know, this is a new reimagining of the Lightning Tree short story or novella by Patrick Rothfuss. I have read and loved uh, The Lightning Tree twice. And I'm not sure how many changes are being put into The Narrow Road Between Desires, but I guess I'll find out if I end up receiving a review copy of it from Golangs with a cover art but, uh, done by Nate Taylor. And yeah, there will be interior artworks by Nate Taylor as well. For those of you who don't know what Lightning Tree is, The Lightning Tree is a prequel novella or short novel to the Kingkiller Chronicle centering on a day in Buzz's life. Buzz is one of my favorite characters in the Kingkiller Chronicle. And yeah, I think The Lightning Tree was a great novella and I hope The Narrow Road Between Desires will indeed be something superior even though it is still, as I said, not technically a new book in the Kingkiller Chronicle series. And for the remaining four books to spotlight today, these are all for self-published fantasy books. Promising one. And the first one is for the Kraken Rider Z by uh, Dirk Ashton and also David Astes. This is the newest book by Dirk Ashton. I haven't read anything by David Astes yet, even though I was going to read Fate Mark Epic this year, but I couldn't get around to it. But I'm a huge fan of the Patternus trilogy by uh, Dirk Ashton. I think it is one of the best urban fantasy out there. And of course, I certainly look forward to reading this progression epic fantasy uh, novel. This is the first book in the Kraken Rider Z series. And I think this is about Kraken Rider versus Dragon Rider. And I'm not sure whether I will be able to put this into my December reading schedule, but if not, I will be reading this in the month of January. I'm quite confident that I will be able to kick the year off with a bang with this uh, book being put in the month of January. And the same goes for The Drags of Empire by Christopher Rocchio. This is the third novella in the Sun Eater series. And well, I will be starting uh, my journey with Demon in White uh, next week. So I don't know too much details about The Drags of Empire because this one, uh, I think it takes place after the events of the Ashes of Man, the fifth novel in the Sun Eater series. So I'm trying to stay away from uh, reading any of the blurb in the Drags of Empire. But uh, this one, this third novella in the series is out now and I have really enjoyed reading uh, The Lesser Devil and also uh, Queen Amid Ashes. I think Drags of Empire will be another great novella in the Sun Eater series. And the next noteworthy release I want to spotlight will be for The Titan of Balaros by uh, Pirate Abba. This is the 11th book in the Kindle store anyway, the 11th book in the Wandering In series. And I have been receiving so many comments telling me to start the Wandering In. And here's what I will say. As I said, I will start reading the Wandering In uh, next year, but I have no plan to actually finish reading the Wandering In next year. That is insane. The series is like 12 million words long now. Expecting me to actually finish reading the Wandering In within next year will mean that I only read that one series within that particular year. And that's impossible, okay? <laughs> but yeah, The Titan of Balaros is out now. And for the final book to spot at today, all of this actually have the same release date on the 14th of November. And for this final book, this is for The Bolt Ascension by Vaughn Roycroft. This is the sequel to The Severing Sun. And I enjoyed reading The Severing Sun, even though it has a bit of a rocky beginning. But once I reach the halfway point of The Severing Sun, I end up enjoying the rest of the book. I truly hope that Bolt Ascension will be overall a superior reading experience. I look forward to reading this and yeah, the cover art is once again done by John Anthony Di Giovanni and I think it looks even better compared to The Severing Sun. But more importantly, I do hope the content just like the cover art will be better because the first book certainly has shown a lot of potential 
that the rest of the series would be something uh, amazing. So that's it. That's a wrap on SFF Spotlight episode uh, 44. As I said, I think before the end of the year, I might actually release uh, three more episodes of SFF Spotlight and I hope all of you will watch that. And also, I just want to say thank you so much because uh, my channel has reached 30,000 subs. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of this video, but I want to offer my gratitude to all of you for always supporting my channel. And yeah, do let me know what you think about the news that I spotlighted today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.